Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see no problem in uh, praying prayers that have been uh, written by others and that have uh, stood the test of time. Right. Uh, that's right. Um, uh, one, I, I'm really, uh, we talked before the show and I'm really glad to hear that you're so interested in the Lord's Prayer and are yeah. writing a book about the Lord's yeah. Prayer. Um, the Amish say that uh, um, the Lord's Prayer is the perfect prayer and it was given to us by the Lord. Why would we want to write anything on our own? Mm. Uh, it's so interesting to read that because so many of my friends think that only spontaneous prayers are the most, most authentic and the most important. But a number of Christians say that the prayers that we inherit from our ancestors in the faith are prayers that we can join into and uh, that can inform and edify us. So you're writing a book about the Lord's Prayer. We all think we know the Lord's Prayer and you've made 14 huge discoveries <laughs> yeah, about the yeah. Lord's Prayer. That's right. Thank uh, you for promoting my new book. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, it's the same thing yeah. with the Psalms. Um, you know, so many Christians throughout history have, have prayed with the Psalms uh, yeah. and because, because we have this conviction that um, there are things for us to learn from the traditions that have been passed down that there are, that it can give expression to things that we might not have expressed ourselves. Why, why do you suppose it is, uh, there is this view, and I can understand it, that to pray extemporaneously is to, prayer, is to pray authentically, uh, to pray something that has been prepared or has, you know, stood the test of time for hundreds and hundreds of years is somehow less authentic? Well, I, uh, it's because um, the prayers got distorted or they yeah. became kind of rote or they became shallow and, uh, um, and whenever things get abused or misused, our tendency often is to throw them away. And my, my conviction is that there really are three kinds of prayers that are important for all, all Christians and one is corporate prayer right. and uh, the other would be some sort of regular prayer with the Lord's Prayer and the Psalms and then spontaneous prayer that arises out of the circumstances of our lives. Hmm. What about supra-rational prayer? The Charismatics call it speaking in tongues. What about it? What do you think about that? <laughs> um, what do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it. No. Yeah. Well, you mentioned uh, that in some of these uh, uh, studies you've done in Europe in various centers of mm. prayer, uh, you'll have Pentecostals, you have Charismatics, yeah. you have Roman Catholics, you have right. Anglicans, and uh, they're right. all praying in the, the form that uh, uh, suits them. Exactly. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. So you've got both uh, the long-term historical prayers written over centuries. You have the extemporaneous prayers, and then you have the what I call supra-rational prayers, yeah. which uh, you know Paul would call praying in the spirit. Right. Well, we I teach at a school where we have we have over forty different denominations, from Pentecostal to Coptic Orthodox, yeah. and we're glad to be together. Yeah, that's a Tyndale, right? That's Tyndale, right? Now, I I, I I I need you to help me with something here. Absolutely. Okay. Um, you, in the chapter where you're talking about the disciplines of mm -hmm. prayer, mm -hmm. uh, you, you talk about uh, bird watching. Yes. <laughs> and, and, the, and, and your love of bird watching and the disciplines that can make bird watching very fulfilling. Right. Right? You just don't buy a pair of binoculars and go out there and hope for the best. There's mm -hmm. certain disciplines. And you're using that as an analogy to um, emphasize the importance of discipline in prayer. Mm -hmm. um, and you say the chances of uh, you know, seeing a, a special bird are always better with disciplines in place. And then you say, prayer is like that. Discipline is no guarantee that we will encounter God, but our chances improve. Now that gives me the sense, as I'm reading that sentence, mm -hmm. that God is elusive, that uh, he's, uh, you know, you remember when Elijah was dissing the prophets of Baal, he said, well, right. maybe he's gone hunting, maybe he's sitting on the toilet. Yeah. You know? and, and I got the impression when I read that, that uh, the chances of encountering God are uh, proportionate to our discipline. Is that the message you're trying to put across? Uh, I, th I think I would actually stand that on its head and, and say that um, my attention span is elusive or... So this is more about fake. you than it is about God. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. um, there's a story, I, I think I tell it in that book, about a little Jewish boy that keeps running off to the forest and his family gets upset and uh, says, stop going to the forest, and he doesn't obey, and so they pull in the rabbi, and he says, the rabbi says to the little boy, you gotta, you've got to obey your parents, you've got to stop going to the forest, and the little boy says, yes, yes, I hear you, and the next day he runs off to the forest. So they say, what, what, you know, what's up with this kid? What's he up to? And so they go and they follow him, and they see that he's praying in the forest, and they say, why are you praying in the forest? You can pray at home, and uh, because God is everywhere, God is always the same. And the little boy says, I think this is very wise. Yes, God is everywhere and God is always the same, but I'm not 
always the same. Mm -hmm. And so I need some disciplines that bring me up short to help me to pay attention to the movement of God. I get so busy, I get so distracted, I get so worried mm -hmm. that it's really easy for me to lose track of what God is doing. Yeah. And just the, the simple discipline of, of sitting down in the evening and thinking about where I've met God through the day changes my whole perspective. Um, I, it's very easy for me to be pessimistic and think that I had a bad day, but if I just take a few minutes to listen to where God has touched me during the day, I see that God has touched me in many, many unexpected places. I started preaching on a regular basis when I was 14. Mm -hmm. I probably had very little to say, but nevertheless, I was preaching. And I think my audience were uh, as uninformed as I was, otherwise they would have kicked me out. But um, I used to think in those early days that if I prayed four hours for a sermon, it would be four hours more impactful than if I'd prayed <laughs> one hour for a sermon. I see. Okay. I had this kind of mechanistic view yes. of uh, the relationship between prayer and uh, impact. Um, prayer can sometimes be very brief, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. uh, and this concept of praying without ceasing, uh -huh. it, it doesn't mean long protracted periods on your knees, right? It doesn't necessarily mean no. long protracted periods, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. What do you think praying without ceasing means? I think praying without ceasing means to live in the awareness and, uh, of God and faithfulness to the reign of God. Mm. It, uh, uh, like I'm married without ceasing. My yeah. wife came along today. We've been married for over 31 years. And uh, I don't think about her every minute right. of the day. Uh, most minutes, of course. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yes. <laughs> and, uh, but, but I'm married without ceasing. Yeah. And I think praying without ceasing is, is a parallel to that. Yeah, it's, it's relational. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, it's a very, by the way, did you, did you finish your Mennonite prayer book? Yes, there's a two volume prayer book called uh, Take These Moments in Our Days. And how's it doing? It's doing well. And uh, one of the things that excites me about it is that it's not only being uh, used by Mennonites, it's, it's being used, you'll be happy to know, by Pentecostals. Yeah, no, I saw that. And yeah. uh, by, by liturgical Christians. Yeah. And one of the things that I like about the prayer book is that it, I think it blends the genius of, um, uh, set prayers, praying with scriptures, that's a high priority for yeah. us, praying, memorizing scriptures, because as you know, that's being lost, yeah. but also build in room for spontaneous prayer. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's very intriguing, it really is. And uh, congratulations on uh, the, the, the prayer book and, and this initiative. Thanks, Jim. I hope it does well. I hope so too. <laughs> yeah, all the best. Appreciate Arthur it. Arthur Burr is our guest, uh, and uh, he has really added some value. Let me, let me show you the book one, one more time, just in case you're in the bookstore and you see it there. Day by day, these things we pray. Well worth picking up. Uh, you won't, uh, you won't um, begrudge the money, and it's not all that expensive, I'm sure. Harold Press is the, uh, is the publisher. Right.